I mean, the only dog whisperer I've ever heard of was Caesar Milan or whatever his name is. Now, this was like an older lady, and I can't remember it anymore, but I just, I would watch it, and some, it was almost as wacky as um, that John Edward guy. There's someone in the audience whose name starts with an A, maybe a B, a C, D, E, F, G, you, sir, yes. <laughs> and the entire audience puts their hand up, yes, we're all names that start with G. Yes. Oh dear. Uh, maybe a G and an R. <laughs> a G and an A. I'm, a G and a B. I'm getting a yeah. I'm getting a really strong G R, like a gur. <laughs> Anyone? Oh, it's you. Okay. I, I bet the woman that you know talks to animals is having a little more of a problem. I'm getting a wolf. A meow. A moo. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe a just moo. <laughs> What noise does a koala make? I don't know. Oh, no, I know that one. In mating season, the um the male koalas actually go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Could you do that again? No. <laughs> I now know what my next project is going to be. I'm going to take that sound clip. I'm going to put it on repeat. want to be in the audience the day that that woman kind of goes, can I get a move? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, oh God. Um, let's skip the next one and go to the gang one. Okay. Because, yeah, anything about Brazil and weird people is just kind of... <laughs> eh. We don't need any more from Brazil, thank you. Nope. <laughs> Gang slang 101. You've never heard of sipping yak? Er, yak. Excuse me. Yak. Yank. <laughs> yank. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this article took a whole different turn. <laughs> Oops. I meant yak. <laughs> sure, you did. <laughs> now I want Audacity to eat this. Okay, anyway. From September 29th. A New York jury has been given a confusing lesson in gang slang when a New York Police Department narcotics expert and a defense lawyer sparred over the multiple meanings of the words yak (laughs) and scud captured on surveillance recordings, testifying against five alleged leaders of a notorious New York gang called Goons on Deck. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. Okay. Detective Alfred Hernandez of the NYPD Drug Enforcement Task Force told jurors that yak means crack (laughs) and scud means marijuana. But Frank Rothman, lawyer for accused kingpin Jaquan J. Cash Lane, yes, I got Jaquan, but I missed I missed yak. Really. Coffee. <laughs> coffee, 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 uh, <laughs> Tried to persuade jurors that, at least according to online slang dictionaries, they looked up the urban dictionary, didn't they? Oh, my God. Anyway. <clears throat> Yak actually means cognac? Cognac. Cognac? Okay. My bad. And scud means, as the lawyer apologetically put it, a female who appears to be attractive from a distance, but who isn't close up. (laughs) The disparity made for some amusing exchanges, the New York Post reported. You've never heard of sipping yak? (laughs) Rothman asked at one point, no, sir. The narcotics expert answered, I've heard of somebody yakking as <laughs> growing up. Shut up, Melinda. <laughs> Lane, who prosecutors said, 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 <laughs> was taped on a payphone directing his crew and advising his girlfriend, Africa O's. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> I could I could make jokes, no. but I'm not. No. <laughs> On where to deliver firearms was behind bars and unable to mastermind anything during the drug investigation, his lawyer insists. So you've never heard of sipping yank, Belinda? <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I saw a DVD once, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that one's gonna be, yeah. Which is funny because earlier we were talking about she was going to make a best of 2011 video for YouTube, and I said, you know, we should keep our little mess ups and put them on. Now I'm glad she didn't take my advice. <laughs> That one would definitely be one. <laughs> Sipping Yank. For those of you that don't know what that is, please turn your attention to the Urban Dictionary. Yes. And, <laughs> I mean, Yak. Come on. I mean, isn't that like a big, like, beast thing? Yakety Yak. Don't talk back. Exactly. Or, well, you know, as, as Bubble used to say in Absolutely Fabulous, there's someone yakking in the toilet and I can't hear the telly. <laughs> Which makes it almost worse. Okay, I'll grab the last one and then we'll say bye. Okay. okay. This one had me cheering and you'll understand why in a very little bit. Okay. Child Bride Beats Parents Arranged Wedding Plan from September 30. Which is today for me, and yesterday for you, and tomorrow, no, anyway. Uh, a 16-year-old girl secretly l took legal action against her parents to escape an arranged marriage. The teen, who cannot, cannot be identified, asked courts to place her on the airport watch list to stop her parents whisking her to Lebanon and forcing her to wed a young man she had met only once, the Herald Sun reported. The court said such applications were becoming increasingly common. Federal Magistrate Joe Harmon said he was satisfied there was a psychological risk to the girl unless the court intervened. The young person's evidence makes very clear that she has expressed to her parents that she does not want to go to Le Lebanon and does not want to marry the person proposed, he said. She has indicated also in her evidence that she has she is fearful for her personal safety, that she has concerns as to what will occur in relation to her mother's reaction once she becomes aware of these proceedings. Mr. Harmon said while it might be suggested by the young woman or suggested the young woman had bucked the authority of her parents, she had displayed great bravery in seeking legal help. It is not the right of any parent to cause their child to be married against their will, whether in accordance with Australian law or otherwise. Mr. Harmon restrained the girl's parents from removing her from Australia and from harassing, threatening or intimidating her or questioning her about the court proceedings. He ordered that they surrender her passport to the court. He also ordered the girl be placed on the airport watch list and Australian Federal Police maintain an airport watch for her. The orders were made just two weeks before the planned wedding in the Middle East in April. Details of the case have been revealed in a judgment published only this week. The gold girl told New South Wales Court her father was aware of the proposed marriage, but generally opposed it. Mr Harmon said that if she were taken to Lebanon, she would return married. If the wedding were to take place in Australia, a court order and parental consent would be required because of the girl's age. The Herald Sun reported last September that the family court had banned a 14-year-old would-be bride from leaving Australia. Wow. You go, girl. You do go, girl. You know? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to sound incredibly racist here, and I do apologise for anyone that I may offend, but if you're going to frickin' move to Australia... You know, at least accept some of the Australian ways, which is children are children. You cannot get married until you're 18. And be a little bit reasonable. You know? I mean, you know, granted, back in ye old wherever, you know, an arranged marriage was not uncommon. But I'd like to think that humanity and society has evolved. You know, if you want to do that stuff, you know, don't come to Australia. 
don't or come any here. other country that doesn't do it. Exactly. Don't come here if you <laughs> expect to be able to do that. And I applaud this girl. You know, how else is she supposed to take her life in her hands and decide, no, I want to finish high school? Exactly. She's 16. I mean, you just think you know what you're doing at 16. Trust me, you don't know anything. You don't know Jack. <laughs> you don't know Yak. Or Yank. <laughs> or Yank. <laughs> Let's hope you don't know Yank. Especially if you're a 16-year-old girl. But if you're a 16-year-old boy, yeah, you probably know who Yank is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. definitely a Yankee. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. So, yay, yay for this girl. Congratulations. I'm glad the court proceedings went your way and you are now able to, you know, do as you choose. Finish high school, go through the rest of puberty without the threat of having to give birth unless you so desire. Though I will say one thing when I first read over everything. All I read was child bride beats parents. And I was like, what? (laughs) No. Yeah. Yes, so... Admittedly, that would have taken... That would have made the story a whole different level of amusing, but... Yeah. Yeah. You know. Considering a lot of the court systems in Australia are pretty much screwed six ways from Sunday, the fact that they managed to get this one through, you know, it gives you a bit of hope. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, yay. Okay. Nope. Next week, we are hoping and crossing our fingers that... Our special guest that was supposed to be on this week, but she's feeling a little bit under the weather. We're hoping she'll feel better next week, and we will have Marianne de Pierre on here. Yeah, we're not just crossing our fingers; we're crossing our toes and our eyes and everything else. Trust me, it's really difficult to like move on. So, unless you want us to keep going like this, come on, Marianne. Seriously, <laughs> we want to talk about your new book that is technically out on Monday. But I saw copies of it in the shops last night, so that's excellent, excellent. Yay! Yay. So, yeah, we're not sucking up or anything. Please. (laughs) So, yes, next week, Marianne de Pierre, we hope. Woo! Yay! Okay, I'm going to say bye, and then we're going to play the outro. Bye! And then I guess I'll say bye, and then you can play the outro. Bye! Bye! This has been the Friday Catch-Up, powered by the Paraquest Radio Network. Remember to catch the Hostess with No Ghostess every Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Paraquest Radio Network.